Hello, Nativity Small Groups, and welcome to week two in our series entitled Victory. I'm Gail Kelly, and I'm really excited about this series because we're going to take a closer look at real stories, real people, the first followers of Jesus Christ with their faults, with their flaws, and how God met them where they are and did a transformation, redeem them. And today and this week, we see the Apostle Thomas. And I'm joined here today with Allie Wade, and we hope that our conversation starts your conversation in your small groups. So Allie, um, why do you think Thomas doubted the disciples? Like what, what, what do you think? I think I love how Father Michael gave some insight in his mm-hmm. character, but what struck you about that? Yeah, I have to start just by saying I love Thomas. Yeah. I just love, I think he is so relatable. Mm-hmm. And why did he doubt Jesus? Because he's human. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes. how often are you, if you're told shocking information, you question, even if just for a second, even if it's coming from someone you love and trust. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. We were joking, talking about this, like yeah. when your friend tells you like, school's closing two hours early when you're <laughs> right, when right, you're right. young in school because of snow or whatever. And you're like, what? No way. Because the announcement hasn't come over the announcements yet. You're not sure. It's like, you got to go to the website yourself or you got to wait for the announcement. You have to then see you're yourself. Like, yes. Then you can be excited. It's almost like a defense mechanism, Mm, I think, mm -hmm. to not, because you don't want to let yourself get too excited. You don't Mm want to trust that much, which is almost sad, but I think it's just human as a defense mechanism to be like that, um, to not fully let yourself get excited and get Mm-hmm. Like believe it until you know for sure yourself that it's true. So and that I, was Thomas. You yeah. need to know for sure. And you know, it's interesting, Allie, throughout the scriptures, there are other people who doubted, mm-hmm. but Thomas is the only one we know as doubting Thomas. <laughs> I know. Isn't that true? <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to be referred to as doubting as Gail, doubting. but I've had my doubts over the t- over my over time. But one of the things we learned about Thomas in the ver- very start of that scripture was that he was not with the other disciples, that mm-hmm. he was in isolation or he'd pulled away. Um, do you find if you are – and keep in mind that Thomas was dealing with profound disappointment. Like mm-hmm. he feel maybe he didn't want to be duped again. You know, he yeah. was so disappointed that Jesus was dead, and he didn't know that Jesus was going to appear again. So he was just so um, lost in that disappointment mm-hmm. or that pain. Have you been in a season where you've been disappointed or felt – pain, um, what is your natural inclination? Are you like Thomas and need to pull away or do you prefer to be in community? Yeah, I just, I loved uh, Father Michael putting that whole backstory around it. He was, I knew he wasn't with the other disciples, which made it make more sense that he would doubt because he wasn't with them when they received the information. Mm -hmm. But like, why was he not with all that? I mean, he was taking a moment for himself a little bit, Mm -hmm. um, which I totally, I totally understand. Um, I, thinking of a time of doubting, I actually put myself more in Father Michael touched on it in the shoes of you might not be Thomas yourself in your doubt, but you may know someone who is. Yes. And I just remember um, a time when I was in high school, one of my best friends lost her brother tragically Mm. in a drunk driving incident. And Mm. I just had to sit with her in her processing and her doubt and all of that you know she was Thomas trying to wrap her head around what happened and Mm -hmm. why and Mm -hmm. you know going through those difficult situations and you might be going through one right now or you might just know someone and love someone going through it and questioning all of that but knowing sitting there as someone to support my Thomas in my life yeah knowing just like Thomas, they're going to come out stronger when mm-hmm. they get through it the way they're supposed to and exactly as God planned. I think that's just the most beautiful and profound thing. Doubt isn't bad. Correct, yes. And there's a generation of mm-hmm. church goers that believed that it was unhealthy to doubt. Mm-hmm. And I think this story is a perfect example that mm-hmm. it's okay to doubt. Yes. It's perfectly fine. I think it's interesting too because – Thomas was not with the disciples. And then later, the next verse says, a week later, Thomas was with the disciples. I wonder what happened in that week, you know, like the conversations that they had, who knows, but Thomas was there and Jesus appears. And I also find it so cool that Jesus knew, Jesus knew without hearing it in person, but he knew 
Thomas's heart. He knew mm-hmm. where his mind was. And what did Jesus do? He met him yep. right there. And said, okay, you need proof? Here it is. Yeah. I loved that too. Father Michael mm-hmm. pointed out. He's not, Jesus wasn't angry with him or upset with him for questioning or doubting. He understood Thomas's heart. He understood how devastated Thomas was when he died on the cross because Thomas had believed in him and thought as much as Jesus predicted it and said it over and over again to his disciples. The disciples just didn't think that he would really die and that would be the that's end right. of it. That's right. And that's what it felt like for them mm-hmm. in real time when it was happening. Um, so I love that Jesus wasn't angry because mm-hmm. he's not angry with us when we bring it to him when mm-hmm. we don't mm-hmm. just disengage and turn our back there's yes. a difference between yes. that mm-hmm. and questioning doubt and exploring it with god mm-hmm. and diving deeper and that's when you can come out stronger just like thomas did so true you know ali i've gotten to know you over the years um through sharing uh, the experience on being the small group team. And I, I've seen how your faith has had building blocks as you've grown up mm-hmm. and you've been plugged into the church. You've had a love of God. But was there ever a time that you needed evidence or w- was there an argument that was presented that really sustained you or kind of put you over the threshold of, okay, I'm all in? I that's funny. You didn't even tell what you were going to ask. I did. I was like, oh, you put me on the spot here. But it came to me. I remember the hardest thing because I was like, I I believe. I've always had a strong faith. I'm so blessed in how I've been raised and always felt a really deep connection to Christ and but I remember being in biology in school and just learning about evolution and being like, I know I can be both. I know I can believe the science and I know I am, I believe what I believe in my faith. Yeah. But why do so many people argue it? Why is there such a disconnect? Why does it not seem to go together? And I actually went to my science teacher and I went to my youth minister here at Nativity and I was like Good. getting all and my youth minister gave me a book to read and like I just really needed that proof. I needed to dive deeper to understand because I knew Mm -hmm. I knew it all worked together somehow, and I knew I could make that connection to understand for myself, but I needed the proof. I Mm -hmm. needed to understand it Mm -hmm. deeply. I love that, Allie, because that was you seeking truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, in God's Word, it says, if you seek me and seek me with all your heart, Mm -hmm. you're going to find me. And Mm -hmm. so I think God is okay with the doubts. God's okay with the questions Mm -hmm. because the truth is going to rise up. And then you're stronger in mm-hmm. your faith to defend it in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously when students are learning all of that, um, they question a lot. And that's why I was like, I don't know what to say to somebody who's sitting next to me in science class that is like, <laughs> yeah. how can you be reading this and still believe that there's God? Obviously, you know, evolution was re- like all the things. I'm like, I want to be able to respond because I do believe in both. So how do mm-hmm. I, you know? Yeah. And so... um For me, it was that too, to be able to go out and evangelize and be able to be articulate in my faith and Mm -hmm. be able to speak it to others, that truth that I found. That's beautiful. I love the example of Thomas at the end, how he was redeemed of his doubts and he went on to become a missionary in one of the remotest parts Mm -hmm. of the world. That to me is super cool that he was taken from a place of, I'm not going to believe to now going and sharing it with whoever he can. Yes, Michael, I wrote it down. I was like, Father Michael said he was the most fearless yes. after that because he just mm-hmm. came out so much stronger. He did. And so can we. When yes. we seek the Lord <laughs> with our doubts and we seek the truth, we can come out stronger. Later in the verses of the gospel reading this week, it says, um, Jesus then told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And that's the challenge we have today because Mm -hmm. Jesus is not going to come to us and allow us to put our fingers in his hands or Mm -hmm. our hand in his side. Um, But he has given us his word. He's given us other believers to walk alongside each other and help us with our doubts. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a great thing, Allie? Yes, I love it. It's beautiful. Great. Would you mind closing us in prayer? I would love to. Thank you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just come to you today and we lay in front of your feet our doubts, our questions, the doubts and questions of those we love. We know at different stages, at different points in our life, we have been or 
currently are Thomas, Lord, Mm -hmm. but we know that you meet us exactly where we are, Mm -hmm. that you will give us the truth the understanding that we need as long as we continue to bring forth all of those doubts, everything on our heart to you, Lord, and to those we love in community with you. So we thank you for this opportunity to continue to understand you and grow closer to you. Mm -hmm. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.